everyone. My name is Dahlia and I work here at the Nanaimo Harborfront Branch. Welcome to the DIY to go felt your own Lord of the Rings character demonstration and instruction video. I'm going to guide us through some of the felting basics needed to make a Lord of the Rings character. But before we get started, I just wanted to let you know about the Creativity Commons, which is inside the Nanaimo Harborfront branch. We offer 3D printing, so you could have something 3D printed by us and you could send it to your local branch. We also um, included this uh, pamphlet in your kit that explains some of the digitization and Adobe Photoshop and other design software that we offer. We have a recording studio where you can make your own videos like this one that I'm using um, the recording studio for. We have a green screen behind me. I've got lighting and you can also make your own podcasts with our audio software and mics as well. We also, um, as COVID dies down, we'll be offering more gaming, so stay tuned for that. And you can find our phone number on the back of this pamphlet, and we can um, answer any of your questions. You can come in and visit us. We're totally open right now. And we can also, again, have 3D prints sent to your uh, local branch. So uh, visit um, VIRL.bc.ca and under branches click on creativity commons and you can find out more information. So enough of that um, plug for the makerspace that I work in. Uh, we will now get to our craft activity where I will show you all the things in your kit. So you should have got this felting mat, a felting needle, so this is the one needle that you're going to want to follow the instructions very closely so that you don't break it or injure yourself. We also have the polyfill and the wool roving. So this is what we're going to use um, to create our character. So um, this wool roving came from a real Canadian sheep and was dyed and you should have a selection of some different colors. So uh, I'll just show you some examples of some different characters that you can make. Um, these are quite detailed, so it's up to you how much detail you want to go into. We have a very own Gandalf here. So here are our little um, characters, you can make them larger, you can make them smaller, and if you want to get more felt to continue making with different colors or making um, more uh, detailed projects, you can find felt roving at, um, or actually wool roving, um, at Michael's or any yarn shop. Uh, you can also order it online. And however, I do encourage you to support local um, sellers these days. Um, they're definitely struggling and we very much appreciate your um, local patronage. So shout out to all the local wool shops on Vancouver Island. So um, let's talk a bit about um, the techniques uh, for felting our character first. So this is a felting needle and it is extremely sharp. So we're gonna want to be very careful about where our fingers are. So when we're felting, we're gonna be stabbing into the wool and you're gonna wanna go at a slow enough speed that you're not um, touching and poking your fingers because it really does hurt. This needle has about uh, five barbs on the end of it and how felting works is the barbs catch onto the wool and cause the fibers to stick together, creating a um, smooth um, uh, surface that is one solid piece. So by poking and creating the, the friction between the fibers, it creates a, um, a solid mass of wool. 
So wool is pretty cool in that it's quite malleable. Um, another great thing about wool is that as you're felting, if you don't like something, um, you can just kind of pull it apart and, um, you know, fix your mistake or um, alter it to your liking. So the wool is quite forgiving as, as you will see. So, um, the first thing um, I'm going to talk to you about is um, using the wool roving in, in general. So here are some general tips that I'd recommend. So here we have some little pieces of wool that I've already torn off of our main chunk here. So it's important to not use scissors in this craft. You're going to want to use your um, two fingers, pinch and pull the roving off of the um, piece that you've been supplied. So you don't want to cut the wool. So once you've pulled off your piece of wool, you're gonna kinda wanna shape it with your fingers. So let's say we're making a head for our character. Um, we're gonna kinda roll it up into kind of like a round shape. And then um, we can start poking and shaping it with the felting needle. So um, we're gonna just poke away and watching closely and making sure we're putting the needle up and down, not sideways um, or doing anything that's um, going to bend our needle because that will cause it to snap. So the thing that isn't forgiving in this craft is your one felting needle. It will just snap if you're not kind of going up and down. And you can go kind of slow at first and uh, join the fibers together in the shape that you're wanting to make. So I just joined these fibers together. And here we have a little round piece that I've, I've just made. So um, another thing is with felting, we want to build up the layers. So you're not going to want to take a huge piece of roving and start felting that. You're going to want to start with a smaller piece and then build it up from there and keep felting layer by layer. So say we wanted to add a bit more onto this piece and kind of build it up to make it into a head. We would just take another piece of wool roving, put it on top of that and put some on the bottom maybe. And then we're going to keep felting these pieces and building up the layers to make our character. And the other thing that I would recommend for this craft is that you start with the body, with the polyfill, which I'll get into in a minute, um, and that we do um, the body and then maybe think about um, the head next, and then add the arms and legs on last. And um, to finalize it, you would then add things like the um, hands, um, ears, um, eyes, and um, you know any any articles of clothing. So you know this this um, cape would be put on last. Same with the little pocket that would also be put on last. Um, same with, you know, you would do the head first, right? Um, and then maybe start with adding the nose and the ears and then the different colored eyes and um, eyebrows, um, the very last. Um, you can also add details on like, you know, the, the pants, um, the shoes, um, this would all come after you've um, attached the other um, body parts. You could also do the body and legs as kind of one piece um, and add your arms on afterwards. It's, it's completely up to you how you want to construct it, but I would recommend um, starting out with um, uh, the polyfill. And I'll show you how um, I would recommend doing that. So, 
We are going to take um, a bit of polyfill here and um, we're going to start with a smaller piece. We're going to roll it up. And we're going to add another piece. We're going to roll it up on top of the smaller piece, so very similar to working with the wool. And then we are going to add a thin layer of wool on top of this. So the idea here is that we're using the polyfill to kind of make it look like it's a stuffed um, character uh, without having to use all the wool for stuffing. So we're going to take another piece of wool and we are going to put that on top of the polyfill and you're just going to kind of want to um, open the wool roving up so it kind of spreads out a bit. So you should see that it's kind of spreading a bit and we're going to put that on top of our polyfill. And then we're just going to start using the felting needle and spreading the wool out onto the polyfill and making it stick. So you don't have to be super aggressive, you're just going to want to gently attach the wool to your polyfill. And you should get something that is beginning to take form um, and uh, you cannot see the polyfill as much. So you're going to keep building the layers of wool on top of the polyfill so that you cannot see it. And because we want this to be a body, we're going to try and fold in the sides as we're felting and cover that up. And we're kind of wanting to round the body. So by folding it in, it's going to create more of a rounded look. So we're just building up the layers and rounding out our body. And um, you can make it smaller than I'm making, you can make it bigger than I'm making, it's totally up to you. This is completely your design, you can use one color of felt, you can use multiple colors of felt like what I'm doing. And it will start to take shape and you will be able to see the polyfill pretty soon as you add your layers on. So you can uh, fold it in um, on the other sides as well to create your body. So I'm just pinching it and then I'm holding it and then I'm poking with my felty needle to make it stick into the shape that I'm holding it in. And as you poke away, you'll start to get a feel for how you can shape things and use the needle effectively without poking yourself and shaping to your desire. And as you build it up, um, you'll need to make sure that you are um, holding it and shaping it in a manner that looks the way that 
you want it to. So um, this is looking a little bit too kind of square for me. So I'm going to add another layer and kind of keep pinching it and holding it um, in the position that I want it to stay in. And again, we're being really careful, making sure that we're not going to get our fingers. So we've got more of a body um, shape here. Um, this isn't the final, you know, look of how it's going to look. Um, so I'm now going to um, keep shaping it um, a bit more. So one thing about felting is you need to be patient. It, it takes time to um, build up um, a shape. So um, just take your time um, and know that, you know, you keep poking and shaping it is going to um, shape up into um, a smaller and um, a more rigid uh, mass of felting. So as you can see, it's gotten um, quite a bit smaller, and um, we're now going to add um, some more layers on uh, and um, start shaping the head next. So welcome back everyone. We're going to continue with um, shaping our uh, Lord of the Rings felted character. So um, what I've done is I've continued to um, shape the body and I started to add some legs onto our character. So um, I'm just doing a really simple basic um, construction here. Um, so yeah, so this is this is a really basic construction that I'm showing you today, and um, if you wanted, you could uh, continue to build up your character with more layers of felt. This is by no means a finished product, but I'm just teaching you the basic idea. So we've got our uh, felted body with the polyfill inside, uh, which we've laid our felt over and um, felted onto the polyfill. And then I've started uh, shaping some legs onto the body. So the other thing I wanted to show you is the um, 
head. So you could do the head like I was showing you at the beginning of the video. So by layering your um, roving, or you could take a bit of polyfill and use the polyfill um, inside the head. So you just take a small piece of polyfill and then overlay your full roving, just like we did with the body, but we're gonna try and do it in a smaller rounded shaping. So we're rounding it around the polyfill and joining it at the bottom. And then on the bottom, we are just gonna start poking away, oh so carefully, avoiding our fingers and flattening and joining the roving on the bottom of our head. And another technique that you can use while doing needle felting is to use your hands just to shape. So I'm just going to start rolling the felt and polyfill in my hands as if I've got a piece of dough. So pretend you're making cookies or something and you're, you're rounding out the dough. We're just going to do the exact same thing. And you can see it's kind of taking a bit more of a rounded shape. And we can just kind of poke away after we've rounded it with our hands. And again, this is just the beginnings. This would take hours and hours more work to get it to be a more solid, finished um, piece of um, shaped wool roving that we would then attach to our body of our character. So this is just like the start of what you'll be getting. Uh, I encourage you to continue needle felting for uh, hours more. It's, it's lots of fun and you'll get a much more solid mass of felted wool um, for your body, for your head, um, whatever, whatever you're working on. So this is, this is how I would go about it and how it looks when you're just starting out. And you can add another layer here. And you would just keep doing that until you've got the head to be the desired shape and mass that you're wanting to attach to your body. So you're just poking around and making sure that you're keeping that rounded shape. So you're turning it and felting and turning it and felting. And then when you get to a certain point where you feel you've, you've needle felted for a while and you want to round again, we can use our hands and felt with the friction from our hands that's helping to join the fibers together in shape. So it's looking a bit more rounded now. So we've got kind of a rounded head shape. And if again, if we keep needle felting, it's gonna get smaller and thicker so that we've got one really solid mass as our head. So I would encourage you to keep felting for hours longer and finishing working on. So you can see already, even after just a few moments, you can shape it. Um, but of course you could, you, you, you can keep going for hours longer and um, get a really solid piece. And uh, from there, uh, you would then, um, once you've got it to be the desired size and texture, you can attach it to your body. So I'm just going to show you how you would attach one piece of um, felting to another. So we're going to take whatever it is you want to attach. You're going to put it into the place that you want to put it. You're going to take your felting needle 
and you're kind of going to steady it with your fingers but winding the needle and you're going to felt one piece onto the other just going around the perimeter of the other piece and felting it into place with the needle so you're doing a couple pokes all around the piece that you're attaching onto the other piece so the base and the new piece kind of all in one. So our little felted creature is shaping up here. Um, this is this is the basic version again. So if, if you were felting for longer, you would have things be more um, finished looking and um, more solid. But for our purposes today, you can see that the head is now attached doesn't take very long to attach the piece onto another by going around the perimeter of it. So we've got um, beginnings of a body and we've got the head attached to it. And then from here, um, you could you know, add the arms on, add some details. And um, I'm gonna put some eyes on this just to show you how I would recommend going about adding details onto your character. So let's say we want to take a different color piece of felt. So I'm going to take a bit of this purple here. For something like eyes, you're, you're only going to need a really small amount. So I'm going to um, just take a really tiny, tiny, tiny bit of wool and I'm going to roll it around in my fingers to kind of solidify it a bit. And then I'm going to take this tiny piece and I'm going to Poke it really carefully into the place that I want to put the eyes. And I'm just going to kind of flatten it with the needle and poke it into the wool. And let's say that we wanted to add another piece of wool to be our eyeball. So we've got like the base of our eye here, it's purple. And then let's say we wanted the eyeball to be blue, we would just take a tiny little piece of blue wool and we would put it into the center of our other purple wool and we're going to really poke it in so it's really, really tiny and just going to do the other eye. So we're taking our bigger piece of purple wool, just slightly bigger. We're poking it into the spot we want to put our eye. Right, and then we're taking a teeny tiny piece of blue wool to be our eyeball. And we're really poking it in to purple wool and then you'll get something like that. So that's just basics for adding details. You're using really small pieces of wool and you're poking it into the shape that you want it on the body part of your character. So you can follow the same techniques. Um, you can start to shape a nose out of the base of your head um, and add layers onto it. So I'm just going to shape with my fingers by pinching a bit of a nose here. And then I am going to add a bit more wool to sh help shape the nose um, the way I want it to. I'm just going to build up the nose a little bit. And you can just rip it out. Like say, say you're not really liking how your nose is looking. You can just tear off that piece of wool and try again or add a bit more on, or what, whatever you want to do. So it's, it's easy to fix. If you make any mistakes, you can just pull it off and try it again. 
So I'm going to add my nose shaping to build up a bit of depth to the nose on my character. Okay. And you can take much longer than I'm taking. Again, I'm just showing you the basics in this video. So you can spend a good amount of time working on getting that nose exactly how you want it to look. And then let's say we're wanting to add um, some ears. Again, you would do follow the exact same techniques so you would take, be taking them a bit of wool and shaping it and you know holding it in place and adding the shape of an ear onto the side of the head of your of your character. So this is kind of looking a little bit golem-esque but not super. You could spend hours working on all the wrinkles right? If you wanted to um, do more, more character details, you could, you could spend a long time on that. I'm just finishing the ear here. So you can get some idea of what adding details onto your character uh, can be like. And uh, you can also add clothing on top of the body. So um, if I wanted to add a little belt, say, around his, his waist, I could take a piece of roving. And let's say we wanted to make it a belt, so we're going to roll it horizontally, right, with our fingers to kind of shape it into a belt. And even use the friction again instead of going round and round we'll go side and side by side to kind of help felt the horizontal shape of our belt right and then we would take that put it around the waist of the body and felt it on top so we're just going on one side and then gently along the front of the belt and then ensuring we're attaching on each side. Okay, and then let's say we wanted to add a bit more. We want it to be uh, a bit deeper so you can keep adding depth and layering the felt belt onto the body of your character. And it will get thicker the more layers you put on, of course. And you can keep shaping it so it becomes a thicker mass. And this is just the beginnings of that. And then let's say we wanted to put on a little um, pocket onto her character, like many characters in Lord of the Rings have. So let's take another little piece of wool. Let's say we're going to make a little um, purple pocket. So you probably have some really funky colors that you're kind of wondering what you're going to do with in your kit. Well, you know, um, you can make your beard a different color. You know, maybe he has a purple beard. Um, maybe he has... Um, pink shoes, um, you know, you can, you can really be creative. You can blend the different colors together like I've done here. So I've layered the red, the gray, and the brown together and I pull it together and that kind of creates a, a blending effect in your felting. So you see the body is, is a blend of different colors. I've used a little bit of blue on the, on the back of the body and, you know, that's, that's kind of the, um, fun of felting is that you can make things all different colors and it's 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 pretty fun looking 
So, um, yeah, and, and maybe Gandalf's hat is green. You know, you, you don't have to stick to the, the strict coloring of the characters that you've, you've seen illustrated. All right, so we're making our little pocket here and we're kind of rolling again to create some depth and to create a small piece. So we're rolling to create the layers first, and then now we're just gonna felt it on its own, on our felting mat. And it's important that you're using the felting mat whenever you're felting um, something on its own, or once you have the body, it's okay to felt onto the body, but you wouldn't wanna be felting just on the table because um, that's going to break your needle. It's, it's going to hurt and it's not actually going to cause the fibers to stick together. You need something squishy like this sponge mat to, um, to get the felting to um, adhere to itself. So important tip there. All right, so we've got our little pocket and then we're just going to felt it onto the belt. Belting it onto the belt. Okay, and let's say we want to add a bit more onto our pocket, so we're just going to take a bit more wool. Gonna put that on top. And we're gonna be really careful about our fingers. When you're working on anything detailed, you need to be super careful of your fingers. All right, so here now we've got a little pocket and um, it's kind of looking like this pocket. Now this pocket, I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to show you, it's kind of falling off a little bit. So in order to make things stick, you really kind of want to felt it so that it it is adhering. So by going around the perimeter, you can adhere it to your body. And if you're finding it is coming off, um, you can just try felting it again or try um, adding a bit of wool on the back of it and um, that can kind of help um, seal it um, so that there's something helping to hold it onto your onto your body. So we've now got a little pocket. Um, you could then you know keep building up the legs and body um, shaping it um, as, as you want, adding some arms, whatever you want to add on to your bot, to your um, creature. Uh, I think this is, you know, a good, a good start. And you could um, use polyfill if you wanted to use it in your legs and arms. You're, you're welcome to do that. Uh, their your legs and arms aren't, you know, super big, but um, so you, you could just use the, the whole roving for, for your arms and legs, but if you wanted to use more polyfill for that, go for it. Um, you could also make another character if you wanted and use um, polyfill and whatever remaining wool you have left. Also, um, encourage you to be creative about um, how you're shaping things and um, uh, adding clothing on and, and, and some of those details. So um, just remember that felting does take time. So you're, you are going to be poking away for hours at a time potentially to get the shapes that you're wanting and to get it to be a solid mass. And I also encourage you to um, 
try different things. So if it's if it's not looking the way you're wanting to, you know, tearing it apart and you know try uh, shaping it a different way. Try maybe using different colors. Uh, so doing it in different um, ways of shaping. Um, you don't need to um, become impatient with yourself if it's if it's not looking the way that you want it to look. So I would encourage you to wait until you are able to um, calmly and patiently work on your project. So happy felting, everybody. everybody.